Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you're all aware of what the world discovered in 1945. It was the most shameful chapter of human history where 9 million people were exterminated because of the, whole, um, the group that they belonged to. Now, we came away from that saying, never again. But then in the 90s, it happened, it happened in Rwanda, it happened in Kosovo, it happened many times throughout history. So, we failed in that aspect. Now, the government here today is saying the UN Security Council has the right to recognize genocide when it happens and has the right to uh, step in using um, whatever means it is necessary to prevent that from happening. If it may be forced, then so be it. Now, why do we think that this is necessary? Now, first of all, we think that it is the role of the UN to uh, protect human life and to uphold human rights wherever uh, it may be violated. And that is a requisite of the UN's existence. Now, our policy is that even if a country is not a member state, it is uh, up to the UN to step in and prevent genocide from happening when it is uh, recognized. And it is, um, and once the UN, no, thanks, sir. And once the UN recognizes that it's genocide, it can use whatever means necessary, if it, uh, even though it is not violence, uh, even though violence is not here. So what? Yes. What basically is your criteria for defining genocide? Now that's what I was going to go on to. Genocide is uh, defined as a of particular group, maybe uh, a government or a ethnic group decides to uh, exterminate another uh, group, another uh, group of people based on what some arbitrary criteria such as race or religion or even political affiliation and is a concerted, has to be a concerted effort where this, uh, this group of people is being uh, systematically exterminated. And so when that happens, we, we say that the UN has the right to step in. Now, why, why do you think that this uh, the rule of the, of the UN means that the, the security general has the, the right to decide what is genocide? Now, the reason that so many cases of genocide happened already is because there was the response was too slow from the UN. The UN took too much time, it deliberated too much, and it could not, be, could not come up with a clear definition of whether genocide was happening anyway. That is why so many people were killed in Rwanda. That is why so many people were killed in Kosovo. So by giving the, the uh, security general this right, it speeds up the process. It allows a unified approach to be taken. It um, gives power to a smaller group of people so who can decide quickly, so, um, can decide faster, and uh, reach a more efficient conclusion as to whether genocide is happening so that we can finally start to step in and do something about it. Yes. What was the security general in such a unique position where he's able to make such decisions? Because the security general is the one who has the information, who is able to look at the uh, situation that is happening there. But if we do not give uh, power to, uh, <clears throat> to one body like the security council, it is, um, becomes something that's messy and ununited and just leads to a failure, of, failure to do the right thing in step in when genocide is happening, which we've already seen happening. So, so, by giving the power to the security in general, it speeds up the process and it allows a uh, concerted effort to be taken to prevent uh, this horrific uh, atrocities from happening. Now, so why does genocide make it uh, justifiable for the UN to step in and invade a country and to violate the sovereignty as it were? Now, because sovereignty is something that uh, is forfeited when, when a country is exterminating its own people. When a state decide to group people together and kill them all one by one. We say that sovereignty has been forfeited, and we have the right to step in and um, do something about it. Like uh, because sovereignty is something that is used to protect its people. And when you start killing your people, then there is something that you have given up. And so we have the full right and the full capacity to invade uh, your country and uh, buy your sovereignty because that is what you have given up when you start killing your people. And so it also justifies that it's also justifiable because uh, acts of violence, uh, acts of genocide can also lead to violence being spilled over to other regions. It can uh, lead to a security issue, issue of national, uh, international security when violence spills over, like in Rwanda, where the uh, genocide actually led to more violence being committed around its uh, neighboring countries. So if we do allow genocide to happen, then that leads to more. Uh, so a circle of violence that spreads throughout the nations and into the international, and into international crisis. So by uh, 
by allowing us to stop genocide from happening, we can stop more cases of violence from occurring than ever happen. Now, it is also um, by being able to move in quickly and prevent uh, genocide from happening, which is also uh, something that is act of deterrent. So, uh, act of deterrence against future cases of um, genocide being taken, being uh, undertaken, uh, and also upholds the uh, image of the UN, which and which are the points that Charlie will be taking later on. And so, uh, <coughs> so, so what is our case? Is that by giving the security council the power to decide genocide, the power to step in and prevent genocide from happening, it gives us speedier conclusions, as, uh, as it makes it easier for uh, decisions to be made much faster and for lives to be stopped before they are, they are being exterminated. And it is justified, justifiable because sovereignty, or sovereignty has already been justified by a dictator when we start killing its people, and also is uh, is the role of the human uh, the UN to uphold human rights and to make sure that this sort of travesty do not occur and will not occur when this motion is passed. Thank you.